This is Daily Armenia, CivilNet's daily news digest. Here's what you need to know today. A prisoner exchange yesterday saw two Azerbaijanis handed over for 32 Armenian servicemen captured since the 2020 war. The swap occurred on the border of Armenia's Davos region as part of a deal which also saw Armenia dropping its veto of Azerbaijan hosting next year's COP29 UN climate change conference. However, this still leaves at least 23 Armenian captives in Azerbaijani jails, including high-profile cases such as Artsakh's former presidents, former state minister and philanthropist Ruben Vardanyan, and 68-year-old civilian Vagif Khachadurian, who was kidnapped in July from a Red Cross convoy. Also still in captivity is Lebanese Armenian civilian Viken Yuljekyan, whose family was given false hope of his release after three years when his name was reported as one of those being freed in the Azerbaijani media. Yerevan is playing host to officials from over 30 nations as part of the UN's ministerial meeting of landlocked developing countries. During opening remarks today, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan laid out three principles by which peace could be established with Azerbaijan. These include the full recognition of each other's territorial integrity and the unblocking of transport links throughout the region, for which Pashinyan highlighted Armenia's Crossroads of Peace initiative. Pashinyan referred to yesterday's prisoner swap as a starting point for positive momentum in the future towards a peace treaty. In related news, Armenia's ambassador-at-large Edman Marukyan announced that the Armenian and Azerbaijani foreign ministers will discuss a draft peace treaty in Washington next month. In addition, today the Armenian government approved the procedure for organizing joint working meetings with Azerbaijan for the demarcation of the state borders. Border delimitation and demarcation remains one of the major outstanding issues between Baku and Yerevan. Meanwhile, the European Union continues to work very hard towards ensuring a peace treaty will be signed as soon as possible. This according to European Council President Charles Michel in an interview with Radio Free Europe. As evidence of this, he took partial credit for the recent agreement between Armenia and Azerbaijan to release detainees, saying ideas suggested by the EU helped to make it happen. In addition, the EU is working on further steps with the goal of a peace treaty and normalization of relations between the two countries. These efforts took a hit in October when Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev pulled out of an EU-brokered meeting with Armenia, which was followed by Baku cancelling a similar US-hosted meeting in November. Michel expressed his hope such a meeting could take place in Brussels, but did not offer any timeline. In an attempt to placate Baku, Michel did not use the term Karabakh in his remarks, instead referring to it as a part of Azerbaijan, and encouraged Azerbaijani leaders to allow the recently expelled population the right of return, or at least the ability to visit. He also stressed that their security and rights there must be guaranteed, with the constitution of Azerbaijan acting as a framework for those protections. The Russian-backed Eurasian Development Bank announced at a press conference today its interest to participate in a number of major projects next year in Armenia, including the construction of Yerevan's Ajapniak Metro. The proposed station, which would extend the subway northwest to Halabian Street, has been discussed for many years with no tangible progress. The bank also indicated the importance of participating in Yerevan's World Trade Center, which it called a milestone project that is very important for the city's development. Other projects mentioned for investment were Gumri's transport and logistics center, as well as various ones in the energy and industrial sectors. Be sure to check out CivilNet's new episode of Mindful Leaders, which will explore the life of Teach for Armenia CEO Larisa Hovanisian. The interview delves into her family roots, her mission of growing educational equity in Armenia, and her views on an array of topics including self-belief, life purpose, and social-emotional learning. You can find the link to the interview in the video description. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.